So today we will be dealing with the the topic uh, under dynamics of machinery, and this is Professor V V S H Prasad, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Department of Mechanical Engineering. So the course outcomes it will be related to the illustrate the static and dynamic force analysis of two and three forces, members by graphical superposition methods, and it will be mapping to course outcome. Three and today we are going to deal with the engine force analysis that will be uh, applied onto the piston. Forces acting on engine are weight of reciprocating masses and connecting rod, gas forces, friction, inertia forces due to acceleration and retardation of the engine elements and elements and here <coughs> we have got totally the five components of forces six five components of forces and there is one more torque that is the turning moment that is going to come on to the crankshaft through the crank so in the case we should be able to understand the terminologies the first uh, force that is the effective driving force that we call it as the piston effort that is the net or effective force applied on the piston. In case of reciprocating engines, the reciprocating parts accelerate during the first half of the stroke and inertia forces tend to resist the same. When we go for the when we go for the an IC engine, when an IC engine, the gas forces will be acting here. Okay, so this is a static force, and the inertia force of this piston put together we call it as the dynamic force, and the net force that is coming on the piston we call it as the piston effort. In this, we are trying to bring out the the mass of the uh, components that will have acceleration and decelerations. So, in the reciprocating engine, the reciprocating parts, that is, the masses, accelerate during the first half of the stroke, and the inertia forces tend to resist the same. Thus, the net force on the piston is reduced during the first half. During latter half of the stroke, the reciprocating masses decelerate and inertia forces oppose this deceleration acts in the direction of applied gas pressure and thus effective force on the piston is increased. So, there are two because this is a simple harmonic motion, the acceleration will be will be there in the during the first half during the second half you are going to have the deceleration therefore where force is equal to m into a therefore this acceleration will oppose that is nothing but the inertia force oppose during the first half and it will reduce during the latter half in case of vertical engine the weights of the reciprocating masses Resist the piston outward stroke that is when it is coming down, and this in increasing the piston effort by an amount equal to the weight of the piston during the in upstroke, the piston effort is decreased by the same amount. So, therefore, the force on the piston due to gas pressure is given as P1 into A1 minus P2 into A2. Therefore, where P1 is the pressure on the end cover, P2 is the pressure on the rod side, A1 is the area of the end cover end and A2 is the area of the rod end. Let M is equal to mass of the reciprocating parts. When we go here, when you see here, this is going to be the diameter of the piston and this is, if you consider, this is the rod end, 
where diameter we can consider in case of a steam engine and here you are going to have the pressure p1 here it is going to p2 therefore definitely there will be two forces that will be acting therefore the net force that is acting on the piston is given as p1 a1 minus p2 a2 where p1 and p2 are the reciprocating pressures and a1 and a2 are the corresponding areas in the cover end and rod end where we consider the inertia force fi is equal to m into a wherein the acceleration of the piston is given as r omega square into cos theta plus cos 2 theta by n opposite to acceleration of the piston and therefore m into acceleration therefore that is going to be inertia force force on the piston f is equal to fp minus fi where this is the inertia force that is going to be reduced so inertia force is considered when it comes to the frictional force when it is acting opposite to the direction of the motion here fp minus fi minus ff that is the frictional force in case of vertical engines weight of the parts of the piston or reciprocating parts act as a force and that will be added in the downward stroke and in the case of upward stroke this will become minus therefore f is considered to be the total net effort that is piston effort on the piston is equal to the first term is force static force acceleration due to gravity that is because of the weight and this is inertia force and this is the frictional force these components will contribute towards the net piston effort in case of an engine force then when it comes to the <coughs> thrust in the connecting rod when you have to calculate fc is denoted as thrust in the connecting rod and when you see this diagram here this is fc and this is f and this is fn when you see the fc as the thrust in the connecting rod f is the piston effort fn is the pressure because of the thrust on the sides of the cylinder when you solve this triangle where this is phi is considered as the inclination of the connecting rod to the line of stroke equalizing the components therefore the f is equal to this component of f is equal to fc cos alpha that is equal to f therefore fc is equal to f by cos alpha only f by cos alpha cos phi okay then the thrust on the sides of the cylinder it is given as the thrust on the sides of the cylinder that is fn is equal to it is normal reaction of the cylinder walls where fn is equal to fc sin phi where this fc can be written as f by cos phi therefore sin phi by tan uh, cos phi is equal to tan phi therefore fn is equal to f tan phi so here f is known to us fc is determined fn is also determined so these three components are determined at the this end we call it as the gudjian pin end this end we call it as the gudjian pin end and the other end if we consider at a we call it as the crank pin end then crank effort the crank effort is given as ft into r is equal to fc into r theta plus phi it is the net force applied on the crank pin perpendicular to the crank which gives the required turning moment on the shaft when you resolve here this is theta and this angle d a o is equal to this is theta plus phi therefore this distance od is r sin theta plus phi is the 
distance. Therefore, F T is the tangential force. F T is the tangential force. F T into R is resolved into two components that is F C, F R, and there is a component of F C that is being resolved in this. Therefore, F C into R sine theta plus phi. This is the component of from the F C where F C is the thrust. Therefore, F T is equal to F C sin theta plus phi. Therefore, F C already we know that F by cos phi. Therefore, sin theta plus phi. This is the tangential force that is acting on the at the crank pin end. Then thrust on the bearings. The thrust on the bearings is shown as the F R comp. This is FT component. FC is resolved into two components, FT and FR. Now, FT we have determined. FT is equal to F by cos phi into sin theta plus phi. Then, when FR is equal to FC cos theta plus phi from the given same triangle DAO, that is FC cos theta plus phi. Therefore, F by cos phi into cos theta plus phi. This is the and the one. Therefore, for finding out the engine force analysis, we have to solve just two triangles. One triangle at the piston end, another triangle at the crank pin end. Then, what is the turning moment? The turning moment is nothing but F T into R, where F T already we have solved as F by cos phi into sine theta plus phi into R. Therefore, we can also substitute F R by cos phi into when you multiply this cos theta and phi, you are going to get this is the term we are going to get. Okay. Therefore, <coughs> F into R sin theta plus cos theta into sin phi by cos phi. When you simplify, you are going to get as the cos phi for sin phi and cos phi we are going to substitute which we have derived cos phi is equal to 1 by n into under root n square minus sin square theta sin phi is equal to sin theta by n in terms of theta if you wanted to express you are going to get f into r into sin theta plus sin 2 theta by 2 into under root n square minus sin square theta here, what the point which we have to drive here is the turning moment can be obtained if turning moment can be obtained if F is the net piston effort is known and radius of crank is known to us and also where N is equal to L by R, where L is equal to length of the connecting rod and r is the uh, radius of the crank and theta is the angle subtended by crank with the line of stroke. Therefore, here we are trying to give the point as to determine the turning moment if the, the terms that are f, r and theta if they are known, the turning moment that is being created uh, on the crank shaft can be determined. Also, R sin theta plus phi is equal to OD into cos phi. That is also what we can see from the given triangle. Therefore, the T can be expressed as FT into R, where FT is equal to F by cos phi into R sin theta plus phi. Therefore, F by cos phi into OD into cos phi. Therefore, for a graphical approach, if you extend the FC and if you draw a perpendicular to the center, then OD can be determined. Once OD is known, then also graphically the F can be, the turning moment can be determined. This is the another easy method to get. Then thrust on the bearings. Thrust on the bearings already which we have 
given we have solid for it and fr also i think we have solved for it then we'll go for the uh, three tutorial problems and these three problems will be very interesting for us and if we look at it if the crank and connecting rod are 300 and 1 meter long respectively and the crank rotates at a constant speed of 200 rpm determine the crank angle at which the maximum velocity occurs and maximum velocity of the piston these are the two parameters which we have to find out given the radius is 300 mm which is nothing but 0.3 meters length is equal to 1 meter and rpm of the crank is 200 rpm omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60 20.95 radians crank angle at which maximum velocity occurs is denoted as theta then crank angle from the inner dead center at which maximum velocity occurs we know ratio of the connecting rod to the crank radius is equal to l by r which we consider as 3.3 and velocity of the piston is equal to r omega into sin theta plus sin 2 theta by 2n analytically we have determined this for maximum velocity of the piston d we have to differentiate the velocity component d vp by d theta should be equal to 0 and equate the equation to 0 then since omega into r cannot be 0 therefore the term in the brackets cos theta plus 2 cos 2 theta by n should be equal to 0 after differentiation therefore when you take the LCM and when it is equated, this has become a simple quadratic equation. For that, the roots are cos theta is equal to minus b plus r minus b square minus 4ac by 2a, which is equal to 0.26 and where theta is equal to 75 degrees. At 75 degrees, we are going to have the maximum velocity. What is the magnitude of the velocity means? Substitute this angle in the given equation and the maximum velocity omega into r omega is calculated and radius of the crank and theta is 75 degrees which we have calculated and the resulting answer is 6.54 meters per second this is the maximum velocity of the piston further one more problem is attempted the crank pin circle radius of horizontal is in is 300 mm the mass of the reciprocating parts is 250 kg when the crank has traveled 60 degrees from idc the difference between the driving and back pressure is point 0. point is 0. 0.35 newtons per mm square the connecting rod length between the centers is 1.2 2 meters and the cylinder bore is 0 0.5 meters. If the engine runs at 250 rpm, if the effect of piston rod diameter is neglected, calculate pressure on this side slide bars, thrust in the connecting rod, tangential force in the crank pin. So, 3 power meters, which we need to find out. The solution gives R is equal to 300 mm, which is 0.3 meters mass of the reciprocating parts 250 kg and theta is 60 degrees p1 minus p2 is 0.35 newton per mm square and length of the connecting rod is 1.2 diameter of the piston is 0.5 that is 500 mm and speed is 250 omega is equal to 26.2 that is 2 pi n by 60 first let us find out the piston effort fp P1 minus P2 into pi by 4 into d square. This is the net pressure into area of cross section. This is the pressure into area. This is the 68730 newtons. That is what we are going to get. Why we have put is the pressure is in terms of newtons per mm square. Then ratio of length of the connecting rod to the crank is L by R, 
Accelerating our inertia force on the reciprocating parts is m r into omega square into r into cos theta plus cos 2 theta by n. Therefore, 250 omega square, this is m r and this is omega and this is the crank radius and crank inclination is 30 degrees and totally you are going to get as the inertia force as 19306. Therefore, piston effort is equal to pressure due to Fb minus F inertia. This is the piston effort. This is the piston effort that is going to come. Okay. Pressure on the slide bars phi is equal to angle of inclination of the connecting rod to the line of stroke. Just as we have proved, sin phi is equal to sin theta by n. This is sin phi, 12.5 degrees. Therefore, Fn, that is the pressure on the slide bars is equal to Fp into tan phi, where Fp is calculated already. That is 49.424 kilonewtons into tan. 12.5 degrees, which is equal to 10.96 kilonewtons. Further, thrust in the connecting rod that is Fc or Fq that is Fp by cos phi 49.424 by cos 12.5 degrees, which is this is the thrust in the connecting rod. Then the turning tangential force on the crank pin that is Ft is equal to fq into sin theta plus phi which is 60 plus phi these are the two terms and this is 48.28 kilonewtons turning moment is equal to ft into r this is the 14.484 kilo newton meter these are the important parameters which we need to determine while calculating the turning moment is the output that will be taken towards the engine output as an engine output. Then there is one more problem. A vertical double acting steam engine has diameter 300 mm diameter and 450 mm stroke and runs at 200 rpm. The reciprocating parts has a mass of 225 kg. And the piston rod is 50 mm in diameter. The connecting rod is 1.2 meters long. When the crank has turned through 125 degrees from the top dead center, the steam pressure above the piston is 30 kilonewtons per meter square, and below the piston is 1.5 kilonewtons per meter square. Calculate the effective turning moment on the crankshaft. Here, the parameters that are being given is diameter of the cylinder is 300 mm and the length that is the length of the uh, stroke is 450 mm wherefore stroke is equal to L is equal to 2R. Therefore, R is equal to length of the stroke by 2, that is 225 mm, that is the radius of the crank and RPM is 200 RPM and omega is equal to 20.95, 2 pi n by 60 and reciprocating parts mass is 225 kg, diameter of the piston rod is 50 and length of the connecting rod is 1.2. We know that the area of the piston is A1, that is 5 by 4 d square into 0.3, which is equal to, this is the area where I just will try to give you the an overview how it is working. Okay, this diameter is equal to 
zero point three meters, and this diameter is equal to d is equal to zero point zero five meters. This is called cover end. This is piston rod end. Okay, and the pressure on this side is given as thirty kilo newton per meter square. The pressure on this side is given as one point five new kilo newton per meter square. So, okay, this diagram will definitely help you in understanding. What we are trying to get it. Okay, the area on the cover side is this. The area of the at the piston rod is pi by four into this is the area you have got. Then what is the formula for pressure net net piston force? The force on the piston due to the steam is P one A one minus P two A one minus A. And this is going to be your area. Okay. So again, here this is the P one A one. This is P two into this is the area minus of the these two areas. Therefore, two zero one eight newtons is the total or net pressure on the piston. Then length of the connecting rod to the crank is equal to L by R that is five point three three. Therefore, and further, the inertia force is F I is given as m r omega square into R cos theta plus cos two theta by n, and it is given as since theta is equal to one twenty five degrees. In the latter half of the stroke, it is coming as a minus. Therefore, it should aid to the Piston effort. It should aid to the piston effort. Therefore, we know that for a vertical engine, net force on the piston or piston effort is equal to F L minus F I plus M R into G. Therefore, this is equal to minus of minus plus, and M R is two twenty five into nine point eight one is the acceleration due to gravity. This will become the total net. Piston effort and phi is the angle of inclination of the connecting rod to the line of stroke, and which is given as eight point eight four degrees. We know that the turning moment on the crankshaft is given as t is equal to f p into sine theta plus phi by cos phi into r. That is eighteen. Three ninety seven into sine one twenty five plus eight point eight four degrees by cos eight point eight four degrees into radius of the crank, which results as in three zero to one point six newton meters as the crank effort. So with these three problems, simply we could give you the Uh, required parameters. Those parameters are which we calculate as the one is piston effort. You can calculate. Second one is side thrust. Third one is thrust in the connecting rod. And that is fourth one is tangential force. Fifth one is force on the bearings on the crankshaft bearings. Finally, all these results in determination of the turning moment.
then the lectures are prepared using the textbooks Amitabh Ghosh, Ratan, Norton, Belani, J. S. Rao and Shigley. These are the reference textbooks that have been taken. And with this, we have found out the to determine the uh, dynamic forces, particularly the other aspect is with respect to the engine force analysis. Today, we have given the input as the engine force analysis and this analysis is carried out without considering the effect of the connecting rod or obliquity of the connecting rod to make the correction couple. In the coming classes, we will take the effect of the connecting rod to make the correction couple and for the net turning moment effort we will be coming out. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.